What's up everybody, JJ here, and this is the Artillery Hornet. And I didn't know they could make a printer this good for under $200. Today we're gonna cover the specs of it, some tests I've been printing on here, and everything you need to get it up and running. Huge shout out to the website Geek Buying for sending this over. It's a, they're an e-commerce site, similar to an AliExpress type website, and they currently have it on sale for $170. I was super skeptical when I saw that price. I thought, how good can you really make a printer at that price? and I've been blown away by it. So first off, I think we should cover the specs here, and that way I can explain some of the things that they did so well in making this printer. First off, you got the build volume, pretty standard, 220 millimeters by 220 millimeters by 250 millimeters tall. There's a lot of printers that fit that range. That's the general Prusa, Ender 3, all falls in that category, and a lot of things can be printed in that size. And even better than that, some large prints are oftentimes sliced up online to fit this standard build size because this is such a common size. The build surface is a really nice coated glass bed that those just work really well. I think they're just a great standard build plate for starting out on. It is a glued down bed, so in the future removing it, if it ever does get damaged, could be a pain. But just so you're not super rough on it, it should last you years before you ever need to think about replacing it. Next feature, and I'm gonna call it a feature, is this design. It's so unique. From a distance, from a thumbnail picture, you could tell that's an artillery hornet. This bright yellow, uh, whatever shape that is, pentagon, hexagon, trapezoid, some sort of, whatever shape that one is. I know that's not gonna change your print quality, but personally, I like a printer that looks pretty good and that the design had some thought that went into it. A lot of printers just look like aluminum extrusions all strapped together and they all look like the same black aluminum extrusions put together. So I like when a company puts a little bit of thought and making their printer unique and really good looking. The next unique thing we need to talk about on this printer is this big cable right here. Inside of here is the Bowden tube and all the wires running to your hot end. So normally you'd have a separate Bowden tube from all this bundle of wires. You need to power these fans, you need to heat the hot end, but this has it all integrated into a single cable, which is a really slick, sleek, out of the way of doing it. Of course, that does come with the downside. If this is damaged, you have to order one from them. It's not a very open source way of doing it. Normally, you can rewire things all you want because they're just standard plugs. This is a very proprietary way of doing it but it does add some rigidity here. It's really durable and strong. I don't think it's gonna wear out. So I do really like how it's set up because it's working so well for me right now. But in the long term, years down the road, if this did start to wear out, you'd kind of be forced to buy one from them. Next up, there are so many things on this printer that are normally the most common first modded things you add to a 3D printer. First off, you've got dual part cooling fans. So there's two separate fans with two separate ducts cooling both sides of your print at the same time. Most cheap printers come with a single part cooling fan and that only cools one side of your print. And if you ever look on Thingiverse, there's always so many different mods for most print heads to try to get that second part cooling fan because it's so important for a lot of different prints to get equal cooling on both sides. It's also nice to see some good, there's a knob over here to tighten your belt on the X carriage. I feel like that's the one that usually gets loose and it's so nice to have a built-in one. That's another thing you often see modded on the cheaper printers to add an easy knob for tensioning your belts. There's not one on the Y axis. The extruder on this printer is a nice dual gear Titan style extruder. That's another place that cheaper printers usually cheap out and will put a really cheap extruder on there where your extruder is so important to getting a good print. It's nice to see they put a good one on here. Flexible filaments as well turned out really great. This is my first attempt, so I didn't take any time to tune the settings. I just kind of guessed. Typically, slower speeds will help with flexible filaments, and this one turned out really well for a first attempt. I'm sure with a little more tuning, I could get these retractions even better. On their website, they list PLA, PETG, and TPU as filaments that you can use on here, and I think all of those should be printing really well. You could possibly eke out a little bit of ABS, but it's nice to see a printer that doesn't say you can print ABS. ABS is so difficult to print on these cheaper printers. It takes a lot of work to get ABS prints without an enclosure around your printer, but I feel like usually these cheaper printers will just say, yeah, sure, you can print ABS when you're gonna struggle a lot. There is this unique reverse Z axis where the Z motor is up here instead of being down on the bottom like on typical printers, but I did test it. This is my way of testing if there's Z banding issues. My first test print that came out of the printer, I wasn't sure if those were Z banding issues, but then I test this. This is a 100 millimeter tall vase mode print, so it prints fairly quickly 
and there's no Z banding issues that I could see on this turned out really well. That can be a huge issue on cheaper printers that don't have good Z axis alignment. This one, their little arrangement they have back here seems to be working really well. When it comes to electronics side of things, they're all very nice modern things. You got a 32 bit motherboard, which is just a little bit better than those older 8-bit motherboards. You can push a little bit more speed and performance out of them. It's not gonna be a groundbreaking upgrade from 8-bit to 32-bit for most 3D printers. It's also a 24-volt power supply, which is just gonna be a little bit better than the 12-volt. You get a little more torque out of some of your motors. Again, I don't think most people would notice a huge performance gain moving from 12 volt to 24 volt, but it's more common for new printers nowadays to come with 24 volts, so it's nice to see it already comes with that. I'm also blown away by how good the stepper motors and fans are on this printer. They are near silent. Let me get this thing turned on so you can see. So as soon as you turn on the printer, that fan noise right there, point the, the microphone is sort of pointing right between me and the printer. So that fan noise you're hearing right now is the power supply fan. And anytime it's on, that fan is on, which is kind of nice that it's a nice steady, constant noise. It's not cycling on and off. But when it comes to actually printing, those fans are so quiet. The stepper motors are so quiet. This is what I would normally want to upgrade to. People usually will try to buy expensive fans for the hot end because those will be pretty noisy or upgrading your stepper motor drivers to a silent stepper motor driver. On cheaper printers, usually that's my favorite upgrade to do first because the silent printer is so nice and it's so nice to see it's already done. Out of the box, I love the noise coming out of this printer. And talking about straight out of the box, the unboxing here was the best unboxing I've ever done on a 3D printer. It took me legit 10 minutes from cutting open the box to when I started the first test print. Maybe more like 10 minutes and 30 seconds before I actually had the correct menu selected for the test print. Typically with an unboxing, I think what slows me down is going through the bags and finding all the parts that you need to put in here. There's a bunch of different screw sizes and you need to figure out where they all go. But with this one, it already had the screws in place. Out of the box, it came as two big parts. There's the vertical part and then the horizontal part. Oh well. And you take the top part, put it on there, tighten the screws into the holes, and then you had to attach the front section and then attach this Bowden tube onto it. And that was it. Then you, I mean, if you plug it in, turn it on, load the SD card, but there's already a test print on there. Printed great. Super impressed with a first test print. I did have to do a little bit of bed leveling, but there is a nice program you can run here where it will move the print head to the different locations around the board and you can tweak these bed leveling screws as it's doing it. And that's one of the few cons I would say with this entire printer is that there's no mesh bed auto bed leveling system here. And I know it's being nitpicky to complain that there's no mesh bed leveling on a printer that's only $170, but once you go to mesh bed leveling, it's so hard to go back to manual. And I think the first real upgrade would be to add one on here. There's already the plugs. It should be a fairly easy upgrade. I remember before I ever tried any sort of auto bed leveling, I thought manual bed leveling, it's really not that bad. Once you learn how to do it and get pretty good at it, it's really not that hard. But mesh bed leveling is just such a nice hands-off automatic system that just works really well. And I hope in the future it trickles its way down and we'll see every printer come with it because it's really not that expensive to add a little probe on there. So when it came to testing, first I printed out their test print. It's kind of a little rounded edge cube with the artillery logo on top printed really well. Then I printed some base mode prints. First I did, did this one. It's a little pencil and tool holder. It's always nice to have that nearby a printer. I'm just kind of like keeping my tools in one place. Next I printed out these little cactuses. This is for a separate project. I'll probably post a short video on it in the future. Subscribe if you're interested. And they printed out really good exactly as I was hoping. The next one I printed out all these pawns for a chess set. And these are pretty intricate. There's five different spirals that go up to this top part and printed eight pawns at the same time. So that means this thing is moving around the print bed, printing out eight times five, 40 of these little spires going up. So that's a pretty difficult print to do, to go around and do all of those little pieces at the same time as it goes up without knocking any of them over. And I just use the stock cure profile. So pretty impressive how well this works. I think this Bowden tube has a lot to do with how well the retractions work on here. And then of course I did have to print a 3D Benchy and I'm pretty impressed with how it turned out. Overall, a nearly flawless Benchy. This one I was really impressed by. 
one of the few benchies I've printed where you could actually read hashtag 3D Benchy on the back of the Benchy. But overall, I think the dual part cooling fan really helps to get those good overhangs, and this really good Bowden tube helps with those retractions. I do like that out of the box, it comes with everything you need tool-wise. First, it comes with all the Allen keys you need, spare little roller wheels for all here, spare end stops, spare nozzle, as well as a little crescent wrench, which I think is for tightening some of the eccentric nuts on the belts. It comes with a micro SD and a full-size SD card adapter, as well as a full-size SD to USB for plugging this up to your computer. This comes with the Cura Profile and a digital version of your instruction manual. This is a really good instruction manual. It's in color, showing you all the steps you need to set up your printer profile, get the whole printer assembled and put together. And I didn't really use it all that much because this printer was so intuitive to get put together. I also like that it comes with this nice little bag to keep all your tools together until you can print out a more dedicated tool storage system on this printer. It's nice to have somewhere to keep all these little pieces together. Nice USB cable for updating the firmware, optionally in the future if you ever need that. And then this is all you need, ready to go. There are a few optional tools that I would recommend you get as well if this is going to be your first 3D printer. First off will be some sort of spatula to help you remove prints. They did remove really well when this printer cools down. It's just always good to have around. It can be really useful. The next thing you'll need is some way to remove the nozzle, and I'll link a video of what you need to print out to help remove those. You also need a 7mm socket to use on there, and that is probably way better than any sort of wrench they would give you. The first nozzle should last for months, so you've got plenty of time before you have to deal with changing nozzles. So overall, super impressed with the Artillery Hornet. I would highly recommend this for any real maker who wants a first 3D printer. I think when it comes to first 3D printers, either you go fully assembled like the Tina 2 that I did a whole review on. I think those are great for younger people or maybe less tech savvy people who don't want to deal with tinkering and changing things. You just want a printer that comes out of the box fully assembled, you can just start printing and making things out of it. But if you want to make some larger prints and really aren't afraid of doing a little bit of tweaking of a printer profile, it's fairly straightforward. You really want to take a bigger dive into the hobby and really get into it. I think this is an amazing first printer. I would have loved to have this as my first printer. I mean, I do really love the Anycubic Mega S. I have so many videos covering it, but so many of my first upgrades were just getting it up to the point that this printer comes at. Your silent fans, your silent stepper motor drivers, your upgraded Bowden tube, so many things make this an amazing printer out of the box. But anyway, that just about wraps it up. Let me know if you have any more questions or comments in the comments down section down below. If you've stuck this far through, you're one of the real fans, hitting that like and subscribe button down below really helps me out and means so much. But as always, go out there, create something amazing today, and I'll see you in the next video.